All right, let's put Sean there. Okay. Sean, can you see? <laughs> I can't. All right, and we're ready. Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna say? Yeah. Go, you started. Welcome to another episode of our tips and strategies extravaganza. 20.5. 20.5. Welcome to 20.5. I'm Danny. I'm Lewis. And I'm, we are here to okay, give we're you here. tips and strategies. All right, so this is our th these are our first thoughts for 20.5. Um, this is an interesting one. Yeah. Um, when it was announced at first, it was said on the feed that we've never seen a format like this. And I not have to, true. Yeah, I would like to come in and say that that is not true. Um, during the Wadapalooza online challenge and qualifier workout four was the same exact time domain in the same format with different exercises. And I know some guys who program that workout. Me too. Yeah. So I uh, just want to go ahead and put that out there that this is not the first time that we have seen this format. Um, it is a very cool structure. So the, the way that it's presented is presented in a chipper style and athletes and coaches are essentially up to their own to decide how they want to break it down, right? Yeah. And if you did that water plus a workout, if you did the qualifier, then you'd kind of have some advice and some thoughts on how this should go, I think. Yeah. I think the athletes that did best on that workout broke the workout into manageable sets. Uh, we saw people try to do things in huge chunks. We also just saw that in the announcement video with Annie. And I don't think that's the best strategy for 99.999% of people. I think manageable sets. Now that means something different to everyone watching this video, but knowing what's manageable for you and breaking it down to limit transitions is probably your best bet on this. Yeah, so, so that the, the exercise selection between the two workouts, so Wadapalooza 4 and 20.5 um, are, are very different. Wadapalooza 4 was toe to bar and wall balls. This is, Ring, ring muscle, muscle ups, up. wall balls, and rowing. Um, now, in, in testing, the, the, the best score that we had for Wadapalooza 4 was actually Pat Vellner, who also did the workout today. And he broke it down into manageable pieces that he was able to do unbroken. That's not going to happen on this, more than likely. Right. Um, so th uh, we can just go ahead and say that that's not a strategy that we would recommend for pretty much anybody. Although every workout every year, there are some outliers and people who prove sure. that wrong. But for the most part, that is, that, that's not going to be something that we would advise or something that most people could even accomplish, I, I don't think. Um, I do think for many people, this is going to be all about the muscle-ups. I think for almost everyone. Yeah. It's mostly the ring muscle-ups. And uh, for those of you that have been following the program, we've been doing a lot of max effort work, trying to build capacity and repeatability with large sets. Um, so you should be well accustomed to stuff like this. Right. And you also should know what a max effort set is for you and what's repeatable. Um, we've been having people do repeats at somewhere around 40 to 50% of their max effort on broken reps. Mm -hmm. And that's been, has become ultra repeatable for a lot of our athletes. And that's probably what we're gonna recommend you guys do if you've been following the program, something like that. Right, it's, it's always been a staple of our program for our athletes to be able to know what their max capacity for certain exercises or their heart rate is for certain things, depending on the combination of movements and time domain. Um, and this is definitely something that plays in our favor as a result. We, we do prescribe things like 20 muscle ups for time, 30 muscle ups sure. for time, et cetera. But something that we, we rely on often is we take a, a, a strength model or component and we apply it to gymnastics. So our athletes know what their capacity is in any given workout, and regardless of the combination. And what they can repeat in sets. Right. Yeah. Um, now, uh, another big piece of this puzzle we were talking about is managing shoulder and tricep fatigue. Yeah, so if you struggle pressing out of your ring muscle ups, if you know your triceps and shoulders blow up on that, you're gonna have to manage your wall ball and ring muscle up sets and how you break those up, how fast your transitions are between them, um, where you put the row in. I think for someone like, we, like Pat, that we just watched, going back and forth between ring muscle ups and wall balls was fine. Yeah. And I think for a lot of guys that, that will be, and even some women, but not for everyone. Um, if it does work for you, if you're not worried at all about it, by all means, that's probably a good strategy. But I don't think that's something we want to recommend to everyone. If, so in the office, we were looking at several plans, right? And, and I think this piece, more than anything else we've seen this year, is going to be very relative and it's going to be based on your capacity of muscle ups. So I don't necessarily think that there's any one plan right. 
the easiest plan um, to create would be for someone who has a very large capacity of muscle ups because you know where they're repeatable and you can break it down at that. So like a, a plan that we really like for someone like that would be something along the lines of something like 40 to 60% of your max effort capacity in ring muscle ups alone and then break it into four rounds of 30 wall balls, 20 calorie row, and then break up the balance yeah. of your ring muscle ups that's left over by four. Um, another potential option would be something like opening up with something like 10 ring muscle ups. Yeah, so like 10 ring muscle ups and then you can do four rounds of 30 wall balls, 20 calorie row, and then alternating rounds of eight and seven, or yeah. eight, eight, seven, seven. Yeah, I mean, those like are very that. comparable, those two different plans. Yeah. Um, what do you think it looks like for someone who has, I, I wouldn't say no, but uh, someone who's looking at in the three to five range of repeatability with muscle ups. So we, we talked about this a little bit. For someone that has singles, doubles, maybe sometimes triples, I don't think assigning a hard rep count for mm -hmm. ring muscle ups is the way to go because we've seen it with, with athletes all, all the time. They fail a set and now like their plan goes to shit and mm -hmm. what do I do? They panic a little bit, their reps get messed up, their transitions get messed up. So assigning reps to someone that potentially struggles with ring muscle ups probably isn't the way to do it. Um, what I would suggest is telling that person you're going to do two or three sets of whatever amount of muscle ups you're comfortable with. 10 second rest in between each set. After your third set, do a round of row and wall balls and repeat that until so you're, you're done. done. Um, you'll probably finish the row and wall ball first. You'll be left with a remainder of ring muscle ups and you'll chip away at those. Um, but I think that way works and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't cause the athlete to feel like they hit failure or they messed up their plan going in. Right. I think that's big on this one because you have to keep moving to be successful in this workout. It is a chipper, but there really isn't anywhere to rest. You should be moving the whole time. So if you have an athlete say, I want to do six ring muscle ups and they fail at four, now they're going to sit there and stare at the rings and then do one, maybe fail again. And it's just not worth it. They should move on. So I think you limit it to sets, whatever they're comfortable with, they perform in those sets and they move on. You, you bring up an interesting point about transitions and like the chipper concept. And again, yeah, it is laid out like a chipper and everyone will break this into some kind of sets and reps. Uh, I would like to say though, is, is the overall intention of your workout should be the same it would be on a chipper. And what does that really mean and look like for us? It's at all moments you need to be working on something and chipping away at repetitions. And I know that sounds like, hey, I always do CrossFit like that, but that's not necessarily the case. Your approach towards a chipper, an AMRAP, a, a for time workout, or sorry, uh, rounds, rounds for time. time. Um, it's always a little different. You have a different intention. And the typical chipper attitude and approach is one where you are always working. And I think mm -hmm. that's very important on this. So again, how you set up for the top tier is going to be very important. If you are going to set your rower up far away from the rings, it should be, be because you have a calculated planned out rest and that should be your only rest time. So always moving towards the goal is gonna be a really big piece of this event as well, I think. I agree. Um, any other tips you have on this? I, I know you wanted to talk about warm up real quick. Yeah, so um, the warm up that we have prescribed is really intended for our top tier athletes. Um, you know, there's such a discrepancy in people's different muscle up capacities that it's nearly impossible to design warm ups that is going to fit people who are gonna come out hot and do sets of 15. Maybe you're gonna do sets of 10. Maybe yeah. you're a candidate for six. Maybe you're gonna do singles, doubles, and triples the whole time. Um, so keep that in mind. When you're reading our warm up, it's really intended for the top tier. Everyone else is gonna have to be on their own or rely on a coach of theirs yeah. to kind of help them dial in the plan a little bit better. Um, again, if, if, if you don't have ring muscle ups, and I know that there's many of you watching who do not have ring muscle ups, um, we're gonna advise that you break down the wall balls and rowing into manageable sets, and for the remainder of the 20 minutes, you're gonna try. sit there and try to get some ring muscle ups. Yeah. And if you're that candidate, we don't recommend you trying ring muscle ups in the warm up. However, you do have to warm up that pattern and that chain appropriately. And our warm up is not written for that, but our coaches on the floor in our private groups can help you uh, develop that for sure. 
Absolutely. Agreed. Cool. Um, you want to talk about our, the deload that we're oh, starting yeah. right after this? For those of you that are following our program, we're just doing this workout Friday. We have one workout planned Saturday. There's no extra work, no doubles. Take this weekend as a deload. Some of you will redo Monday. Some of you will move on into the next phase of our programming right after this. So take Friday and Saturday as a deload in volume. If you want, this would be the right time to take two or three days away from the gym and just kind of relax and unwind. Absolutely. Lewis, can you tell us about our national champs and how they're yeah. doing right now? We got four guys sitting in first place right now. Will, Julian, Carrie, Vidarth, um, all really crushing competition, looking really solid. Uh, we're sitting in first in Mexico with Brenda, first in Panama with uh, Bochi. And we have a couple second place uh, competitors as well. Hopefully they pull it out this last weekend. Cool. Um, uh, for any more information on our training programs, anything that we offer, you can uh, find us www.teamsoultraining.com. Our warm ups are going to be posted on the YouTube page as well as our Instagram. And uh, Jeffrey Epstein did not kill himself. <laughs> hey, buddy. Whoop, whoop, bye. <laughs> <laughs>